Today I want to talk about the Comstock cage trap. Now this is a uh, kind of new style of cage trap that came out, oh, sometime within the last um, eight or so years. Uh, a lot of people want to know, is this the ultimate cage trap? Is this the only cage trap that they need for either their wildlife control uh, company or for uh, say a homeowner or a business in particular? Uh, that has employees doing their wildlife work. Uh, I'll get right to the point with that. Uh, my answer to that is no, this is not the only cage trap that you should have. Now, having said that, is this a good cage trap to have? Definitely, and if you don't have any in your wildlife control kit, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you purchase some. Now there's different configurations that you can get this in. You can get this with a single door. This is the double door model. Uh, you can get this where it actually has an extension out to make what's called a flush mount. Not gonna cover any of that, really not even gonna talk about any of that. Instead, I just wanna talk about the basic principle, the basic trap here. Uh, this is a two door model. This is definitely what I recommend. It is 24 inches long. It is 11 inches high, um, nine inches wide. Now, when having said all that, when you do set the doors for this, the actual opening is really about nine and a half by nine. And I'll show you once we actually set the trap on how that looks. Um, I did do a review of this trap in WCT Magazine several years ago. Uh, I did have some issues with the trap at that time. Now, I'm very happy to say that the issues that I pointed out that I did not like with the trap really have been addressed. Uh, so again, this is an excellent trap. I own several of these myself. I really think that it belongs in your wildlife control kit, but it is not the end all of all traps. There is a, kind of one exception to that. Uh, where I will say it is the trap to have. Now, if you want to add additionals, that's fine, but that's the beaver model. The beaver trap that Comstock uh, traps make, but there's nothing else like it on the market. Uh, I think that it is the ultimate beaver trap. It's the only uh, cage style beaver trap that I personally have. A lot of that is because my beaver jobs don't really uh, require any other style of trap. I can get everything done with the Comstock. So I have no experience with the Bailey. I have no experience with the Hancock. And there might be cases where those two styles of traps are better than the Comstock. But here in Ohio, we're also allowed to use snares uh, for wildlife control for catching beaver. So between the snares, between the uh, cage trap that Comstock has for beavers, there's absolutely no reason for me to invest in another beaver trap your situation might be a little bit different. But let me go ahead and get back here to the Comstock trap. Now, this is a very heavy duty trap. It weighs 12 pounds. It's not the cheapest trap on the market. However, if you are a homeowner or a business owner who has their own wildlife uh, control done by employees, in my opinion, this far outweighs what you would get at like a garden store or a sporting goods store, a tractor um, supplying store. Uh, and let me explain why. First off is the actual uh, wire itself. This is half inch by one inch wire. Now, most of the traps that everybody's familiar with, they have a heart style uh, that are sold um, at the uh, tractor places, at garden centers, they have one inch by one inch wire. Now, whereas that might be fine in certain situations, the important thing to realize is with a raccoon, one inch by one inch means that they can go ahead and reach outside of that trap by about eight inches. Um, and so you now have to think of, well, what other things do we have? On top of that, if you have skunks as well as at times raccoons, with that one inch wire on the bottom, they're able to dig up the yard and put a lot of additional dirt and uh, products inside of the trap with them. Skunks in particular are very notorious for doing this. Um, a trap like this with a skunk, 
if I just set it in the yard, if it was one inch by one inch wire on it, it would not be uncommon for me to have anywhere from one to almost 10 pounds of dirt included in the trap with the skunk. So that's something that I think is extremely important. This trap also, the wire's protected because it comes powder coated, whereas most of the other traps do not. Uh, and so they're galvanized material. Yes, that's gonna give them some protection, but over the years, it's not gonna give you that uh, real long protection, specifically if you store the traps outside. Uh, now, of course, there's always exceptions to the rules. There's a green powder coated one out there at some of the tractor uh, supplying companies. Um, the big difference with that is the thickness of the wire itself. This wire, now I can't tell you if it's 12 gauge, I don't believe so. I believe that this is 14 gauge based upon how it feels. Compared to the 19 gauge that the other trap is, or even 16 gauge, what that means is that this trap, even though it's about $120, is going to last you 10 years, 20 years, 40 years into the future. That's how well this trap is made. The other traps, yeah, you might be able to buy two for $25. They might not make it through actually more than one capture. So if you look at that over a 10 year time period, if you have to buy a new $25 trap once every two years, well in five years, you already have exceeded the um, cost of this trap. And let's face it, in the next 10 years with the way prices are going, they're not even, even going to be $25 traps anymore. Um, and, and that's one of the big things, specifically at the garden centers, I see what are, are marketed as raccoon style traps, but I see them marketed for $60, $70, $90, and, and they are much more trap than you're ever gonna need. They are much more prone to issues with them and not working properly. So if you're gonna spend that kind of money anyways, why not spend a little bit more and get something that's gonna be with you? Now, there are some things with the Comstock that we need to address. First thing is, if you notice, the way that this trap works is, and hopefully you can see this in the video, is that it actually has what's called a swing uh, door, swing gate, swing wires. It's not the standard treadle style trap that all the other traps are. There's pros and cons to that. In order for this trap to fire, whether I have a single door or a double door, it means that the animal must enter the trap, but it must push this out of the way far enough to release the doors. Now there's a little ledge here up on top uh, and I'll show you when I set the trap, uh, how all this works. But if you have a situation where the animal reaches past these wires uh, or does not commit all the way through it, this trap is not gonna work for you. And that's where the other style of trap really does come into play. Now, having said that, you also have to realize that the regular style cage trap that has the treadle on the bottom, doesn't matter if it's made of metal, doesn't matter if it's made of wire, that trap has to be longer than what this trap has to be. And the reason for that is because you need about two thirds of the trap for the animal to get in there, to stand on the treadle, to get to the bait behind the treadle, to close that front door. Whereas here, you don't need that. You can literally put the swing um, bar dead center in the middle. Now, this again is where there's the issue with if it's only a single door. Um, you can have issues with it. Uh, you can have refusals. You can have problems where the animal is able to get out, kind of. Uh, the springs on this are very, very uh, hard. Uh, so it does a pretty good job of pushing the animal inside but I do think that we need to consider animal welfare when we are looking at these traps. So there is, and kind of along those lines, there is an 18 inch version of this. Again, this is the 24. Take a look at how the doors are right here. To me, the 18 inch version, I don't recommend it because it's very tight for the animal to go ahead and move around in. 
The 24 inch to me is perfect. Groundhogs, skunks, raccoons, possums, they can still turn around inside of here. So there's not an issue for that. Whereas with an 18 inch trap, based upon the size of the animal, it might have some problems turning around. Not necessarily with skunks uh, per se. Skunks are much smaller than people think that they are. But definitely, if you've got a 20, 22 pound raccoon in an 18 inch trap, it probably is not turning around or turning around easily. Uh, so again, I think animal comfort, we do have to think about that uh, when we're looking at our traps. By the same token, on a regular style trap, you're looking at a 30 inch trap versus the 24. So there's an additional six inches there. And once again, that's needed in order to make sure that the animal is all the way in and caught. So in a nutshell, I really, really like the Comstocks. I do not think that they are the only trap that you should have. There's a lot of advantages to them. So let me go ahead next, get into how to set the trap as well as show you some of those advantages. I wanna take a minute and talk about some of the other resources that we have available for anyone interested in the wildlife control industry or for those that are having a problem uh, with their home and they would like a little bit more training with it. The first thing that we have for those interested in the industry is we do have WCT Magazine. This is a bi-monthly publication it is the only publication for private wildlife control operators in existence. Uh, we have several writers for this. Uh, like I said, it's a bi-monthly publication. It covers a whole range of issues with wildlife control from tips to equipment reviews to business issues such as pricing, contracts. If you're interested in wildlife control and you want to take yourself to that next level, consider subscribing to this. You can do so on our website. So you can go to wctmagazine.com. We have subscription information there. This is avail available both in print and digital format. The other thing that we have is our online training center. It is a collection of videos. Uh, we have free videos on there. We have paid videos. We have actual training courses uh, complete with certification. So you can get there by going again to our website, wctmagazine.com, clicking on the online training button on the left-hand side in the menu. There'll be an option there to go ahead and get to our online course. So for instance, if you're a homeowner and you are having a problem with woodpeckers, we have a woodpecker course there that talks about how to go ahead and take care of it. What's required for it, the federal forms that are necessary based upon what your control method is, why you're having a problem, harassment techniques that you can try, species identification information. There's a lot in that course. I believe it's about an hour and a half, two hours long. Uh, we also have other courses, such as our Canada Goose Management course, which for professionals, if you're in a state that requires training in order to work with them, you can check with your state, but most states are gonna recognize this training as well as the courses, again, with the certification on it, if you have continuing education requirements. Those should be uh, valid in your state because you do have to go through the course, you do have to take tests inside of it, you do have to get a passing grade. So even though we're not face-to-face, -face, there's still a lot of information that's covered. We are currently working on our running a wildlife control business DVD converting that over to the online courses, as well as our extremely popular bat management course. Uh, that is currently uh, taking pre-sales up until the uh, well, October 31st of 2020 is when that goes. So if you are looking for more information, uh, guidance with your wildlife control issues, again, we have the two options. We have WCT Magazine and we have our online training center. Go ahead and give us a check out with that. And let's go ahead and continue now with our video. Okay, one of the problems that people have with setting the Comstock is it requires a little bit more effort than a regular style trap. Regular style trap, generally you just open the door. Uh, there's a little hook there, usually on the right hand side, or there is like a little bar on the left hand side you either put the hook into one of the um, 
wire openings to go ahead and hold the door open, or you go ahead and you bend up um, kind of like the, the, the tab for the door, or rather for the treadle, uh, and then it's a friction fit, and those are on gravity style doors. The Comstock is powered doors, uh, so we do have a little bit more to it, and it does take a little bit more finesse uh, to go ahead and set the trap. Now, you can set the trap by hand, however, they do also have a setter that you can purchase. If you've never used the setter before, and specifically if you're a homeowner or if you're a business, I highly recommend getting the setter because it makes life so much simpler. What's nice if you're a wildlife control company is the setter makes it easier to go ahead and reset the trap if you're on a roof uh, or in some other area. Plus that setter can go ahead and be used on all of the Comstock models. So whether it's the beaver trap, whether it's a double door, whether it's a single door, it doesn't matter. The setter works on all of them. So let's go ahead and let's start with it. The first thing that we have to do is we have a bar that's sitting here that I'm flopping around. It's very important that this bar sits upon the top ledge of the swing gate here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the swing gate out of the way, and then all I'm doing is with my thumb on the back side is how I'm controlling the swing gate right here. And then I'm putting that bar I was swinging so it's sitting right on top. Now, in the older versions of this, it was kind of difficult to turn this bar. They have, and this is kind of one of the changes that they've done, uh, they've gone ahead and they've made these tabs that you're gonna hook onto uh, to keep the doors open much bigger. So what I do is I just go ahead and I push up on the tab. Like I was saying, I position the swing bar for where I want it. And also you can see, well maybe you can't see, but if you do it this way, you should be able to see. You see how much play is in that? There allows you to go ahead and cert set certain configurations. So for instance, if I want the trap to be more sensitive, and I know for a fact that the animal's gonna come this way through the trap, I can actually put this on the shelf uh, for the swing gate here. I can put it closer to the uh, area where I believe the animal's gonna go. Uh, or come from, and you can see how now my trigger wires are actually facing out this way. What does that mean? It means it does not require as much movement for the trap to fire as if I was dead center with it, because if I'm dead center, now I still have to go all that way. So for this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do dead center with it. Now on this um, trigger rod, which is what this top thing is, you do have two tabs as I was talking about. On your doors, you actually have your spring hooks. Okay, so you kind of want to position your spring hooks where those tabs are at. It just helps make life simpler. I'm gonna start doing this with the setter first, and this is the setter. And then after the setter, I'll go ahead and I'll set it by hand to show you that it can be done. But if you don't have the trigger bar sitting on top of the shelf for the swing gate, you're never gonna set these traps. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over, hook in here into the side. Notice that I have this up. And this is where I, I wanna show people how simple this is to use. See how I can pull that straight up like that? And then it's just a matter of getting that it helps when you have glasses on and you can see what you're doing <clears throat> that door open okay so there's the first one now once you had the first door set that trigger rod there's so much pressure on that that it's very easy to set the second one so the first door is the hardest of the two to set but this is where I was talking about that even though this trap is 11 inches high it really only has about a nine and a half by nine opening because you can see that we've got almost an inch and a half of space here between the top of the door and uh, the top of the frame. So yes, it does restrict the animal down a little bit. Uh, that means that if you are just setting these in the middle of the yard, 
you might have some refusals or the animal might be more likely to refuse going into the trap because it is more of a constricted opening. But if you're in a trail set and we'll discuss setting or placement of traps here in a little bit, if you're trail setting, as well as some of the other tricks you can do with this trap and why this is such a great trap, uh, it really helps negate that size difference. So here's my first one set. And by the way, because of it being spring powered with that bar, the reason why it's so difficult to kind of set is that bar is what locks those doors down. Okay, so that's why you see me struggle with it a little bit. That's actually what's going on. So we'll set this door next. Again, I'm gonna take my setter tool here. Notice that the shelf goes up on top. You go down to the door and hook this into the door and then you hook your other bit right up on top. Lift up with it. And you saw how much simpler that door was to set than the first one. Okay, now the trap is set. So until this swing gate actually moves, you can do whatever you want with it. And here's the advantages of the Comstock. You can put it on the side. You can put it upside down. And specifically for the beaver trap, this is the preferred way to do it. Have it where your doors are on the bottom. Again, you can put it on the side. You have a raccoon that's climbing and you're able to mount this. That probably cuts the trap off, but you can see, you can go ahead and you can mount this in a vertical position. You can have this on any angle and those doors are still gonna work. And this is what makes it better than the regular style trap that if you're talking a baited set, I still think that the old style, the uh, treadle door or single door is the better trap for baited. Uh, I still have an issue with the um, Comstock single door. And the only issue I have with that is the distance that the swing gate has to move in order to fire the trap. I have single doors. I've used the single doors. Um, I just think that specifically a homeowner or a business owner doing this themselves, they're going to find it much easier to use the treadle style than the professional. Professionals, again, if you don't have the double door in your kit, you need it in your kit. What's nice with the double door is this is what's called a walkthrough set or a blind set. What that means is it doesn't require any bait. It does require you to find the travel location of the animal. Once you find the travel location of the animal, you place the set trap in here. The animal can walk through from either side they don't see the wires with the doors open. All they see is what's going to, my guess is, look like blades of grass or weeds uh, for the trigger wires inside, and they're much more likely to walk through it. Hence, it increases your capture rate. It uh, takes time off the capture rate because you don't have to entice them inside with food. They're already walking that trail. So if you find the trail and put this on there, you're gonna have success. If you set this trap, if you buy this trap, set it like this, don't put any type of bait or lure in it, don't put it on a trail, and just stick it in the middle of your yard, you're not gonna catch anything that you're trying to catch. And if you do, go out and buy a lottery ticket if you haven't used up all your luck. Um, that's not how this trap is meant to be used. Again, that's where if you have skunks grubbing in the yard, you're able to get that old style treadle single door out there, put bait in there, put it by the grubbing area, let the skunks enter it, and you're fine. Where you would use this for skunks is, okay, here's the path that they're coming into my yard on. Then you set this on that and it's not a problem. Uh, and there's some other benefits with this as well that I'll, I'll get to. So we've got the trap set, we have it placed, the animal walks through, they hit, the swing door, we're gonna push against it. And I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do that or not with my thumb. So you can see how strong this door is. Um, it's not just going to not go off. Uh, it, it actually takes um, a, a bit of work to go ahead and get these um, wires moved. And I'm sitting here trying to. 
and it's just not going to work the way I have it. So let me go ahead and take a break here and then we're going to come back and we are going to fire off this trap. I'm going to have to get something in order to show you how it fires off. And then we're also going to go ahead and get into the, how to set the trap without um, having the setter. 